Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I think we're excited to be here today. Um, and be honest, some of you, maybe half of you have seen some remnants of this. Um, and as Thad and I were actually talking this morning, I think one of the things that's exciting is I think every time we've presented this, it's always something has changed or evolved within the tool itself. Um, so there's always something new to show, which I think is exciting. So um, we're going to do a little bit of demo today, but I think we'll just go into introductions of ourselves because we have a lot to share um, in 30 minutes. But I'm Ryan Blake. Um, and I'm, we're presenting today from the standpoint of Summit Events versus the University of St. Thomas. So I'm the product owner, product manager for the Summit Events open source app. Um, but then day job is the enterprise CRM director at the University of St. Thomas. And I'm Thad Dahlberg. I, well, you put lead and master developer of Summit Events, <laughs> that's quite a lofty title. And then I'm a senior software engineer at the University of St. Thomas and Ben Durant, my manager's online there, so you want to talk to him, but I mostly do work for uh, the CRM team. So, and I think the other thing to, to note is that there is a team of people around Summit Events, um, and I, we don't have them in the slide, but I want to make sure they get recognized in terms of like Jim Hubert is actually one of the um, partners with Summit Events, um, and doing a lot of work there. And then I know we have other people on the call, um, like Mike Walter, Farah Friedrich, um, Sandhya Gupta, uh, and then um, other people, uh, Kathy Lukeman is involved. So we have a, a core team that's been working on this and always looking for more. So we'll talk about that at the end though. Um, but the, the biggest question is what is Summit Events? Um, and the way that I've been framing it is that it's a fully functioning open source event management tool um, that's just leveraging everything that's already native and built within Salesforce. Um, it's in Salesforce, it's native to it. Um, there is some, some code associated to it, um, but it's all there. Um, so, the, which is the, leads to a following question of like, what do you mean by fully functioning? Um, which really, which by fully functioning, that being that this is a developed product, as I would put it, or application, um, you get the, the full suite of things that you would expect in an event management tool. And that being able to customize all the setup and management of it, the front end registration, so the page in which people are actually registering themselves, um, triggered communication uh, and then integration just naturally with your Salesforce data because that's where the tool lives. Um, so that's the idea of what it means by fully functioning. Um, and, and I put this down here of like you can really sit, download it and use it immediately. Um, one of the things that we've, we've really kind of converted to or been really thinking about is how do we make this usable for anybody who just has Salesforce. Um, the same way that you download an app on your phone and whether you know, may, maybe you have to have an Apple phone, I guess you can get certain apps that you can just use. And that's what we started to move to in terms of this vision of it, knowing that not everybody in higher ed or everybody in a nonprofit space um, may have um, EDA or NPSP, um, really making sure that you can just use it. So that's kind of the idea of it. Um, but going into what is open source, which is usually the uh, follow-up question, um, which is really just software that anybody can see and inspect the code on, um, right? You can modify, you can enhance it, you can, you can create your own branch or fork and, and really kind of customize the software to fit your specific needs. Um, and that's what we're doing with this Summit Events is that we have it out there, we have the core code, um, but it's all accessible um, where I think some of the other managed package you might see on the App Exchange, whether it's Salesforce or whether it's, it's, it's another um, tool, regardless of the tool, you can't see everything that's going on. And um, we should quickly note that we yeah. are Going to head towards a managed package, you could use it right now as unmanaged code, but we would mm -hmm. like to make it easier for you to install and uninstall. So you will be able to see all the code in the managed package, but we are moving to a very quickly, probably by the end of next month, have a package that you'll be able to install and right. run Summit events. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more too um, with the roadmap to give some perspective as to what that will mean. Um, so this is the, the too long didn't read um, slide. Um, and more so about what is open source. And I wanted to highlight the Salesforce open source commons program. So I think it's important to note that um, salesforce.org is supporting the open source project and community of things. Um, many people may have heard about um, the easy application as one example, if there knows out there in the open source commons, but um, so is uh, EDA and PSP, if I'm not mistaken, is a part of that open source uh, element. Um, so I more so put these here just to really drive home that it's very much community based and it's the community that we want to have input into this particular uh, tool or application. Um, so it's not just the, the one perspective of St. Thomas or of just 
um, one school's um, view of how events can and should be managed. So and these slides will all be available to you later. We're going to go really mm -hmm. quick because we've got some demos yes. to cover. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, so, so the question is, is open source. We have this tool that's fully functioning that people could use. I think most people have said, why don't you just package it up and sell it? Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to being in higher ed and Joanna actually touched on this and that we're always all willing to work with other schools more than maybe ourselves. Um, but this is one thing that I would say our CIO really hits home on is that we should be helping, um, we should be sharing our innovation uh, through collaboration. Uh, so we really want to build on that, knowing that we can make things better, not only for ourselves, um, but for the education community as a whole, um, as we really um, get that, make those collaborative efforts. Um, it also fits within to our mission as a university. Our, our university brand or tagline is all for the common good and that we want to give back to the community um, versus just keeping things for ourselves. Um, but I would say the two other ones that are also really big are sustainability and longevity, as I think we tend to find um, anything that's custom developed tends to live with the developer. Um, if the developer were to leave or not, which that is the developer, um, when the lottery or you know, choose just not to wanna work on it anymore, or be assigned a different project, the life of that application now starts to fade. Um, and we want something that can last with St. Thomas for a long, a long time. Um, so, so those are those things. Um, so I sped through all of that, but um, we really wanna to get to these other pieces, which are the kind of the three key stages of when we're looking at summit events. And, and this is really setting up of, being able to spin up a scratch org, which is what we tend to encourage um, to work with the unmanaged code and really get a feel for what the tool is doing. Um, actually how to set up and create an event. Um, and in my mind is to show the uh, functionality uh, of how simple I would frame it that it is. Um, and then the actual registration of an event and how you can, what that, what that experience is like. Um, so we're not gonna go in that order. We're gonna reverse it. And we're <laughs> actually gonna give you all an opportunity to experience it yourselves. Um, so if you go to the next slide, there's a QR code. Um, and if you actually just hold up your smartphone camera to the screen, you should be able to get a URL that's going to um, prompt you to the registration page. And the note that I have on the bottom is that I'm using the St. Thomas template. And this is one of the things within Summit Events is we can create these custom templates or have a non-branded template um, for what the registration fl flow and process is. And one of the things we experienced and slightly troubleshooted is making sure that it was mobile responsive in terms of what the design looked like. Um, but this is all feeding into a scratch org, so it'll all expire in seven days, six days. Um, so feel free to actually go through the full process of registration. Um, so I think that'll give you a feel in terms of what the user experience is like. And then as maybe leave it there for like 15 more seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but what we wanted, what I want to do, and what you'll end up seeing in this demo um, that we have sped up, it took me about 20 total minutes to create the full event. Um, but um, we sped it up so that we could, you don't have to watch me type so much, um, <laughs> <laughs> as well as uh, to just kind of see that it is, there's some um, habitual things that you'll just do as you want to, to make things custom. So I'm going to talk over this video. There's no um, sound associated to it. Um, but so we're in, this is, I'm in the scratch org and you can see that within the URL. Um, but there's a, a application or an app for summit events with all the objects that you would need for the core functionality of it. Um, and then it's going through and literally just creating a record. Like you would create a record for anything else. I think as you, you watch this and it's in, um, like I said, speed time, um, it's, it's putting in the dates that you want, um, putting in what you're looking for and what I'll, frame is, um, I don't have the ERD here, but there are um, links to it in the PowerPoint. Um, but this, this event level or the summit event is the shell for all of the things that somebody would register for. So some of the thought or process of setting up an event is to try and capture it into um, buckets, I guess you could say. Um, so that open houses, if they're all the same thing, you can just have different dates you want to set it up for. Um, the section that I'm doing here is all customizable now and asking, you know, what do you want to actually ask the registrant? Um, so you can ask it, you can require it, you can ask and require and make those things custom. 
making sure that you are customizing, you know, where the event is. Um, this is I'm, what I've set up is a virtual event because I think it's relevant to what people are experiencing today is that all of their on-campus events start to become virtual. Um, and then it all becomes customized in terms of what the experience is and what you want to display on it. Um, so all of you experienced and saw that the image was there, um, the text was there, and it's just formatting it now. And then I think the other thing you'll see is that it's all um, changeable, right? So I'm doing a lot of copy and pasting um, and simple hyperlinking. Um, and all those hyperlinks are real, so it's not fake. If you were to click on the Power of Us Hub, it should take you to our, to our team page. Um, and this is where I think the, the text piece of it becomes um, customizable and that it, it doesn't take IT support. And this whole element of it is, I think with that and I, both of our backgrounds are in um, undergraduate admissions for, at St. Thomas particularly. It's where I've spent most of my careers in admissions um, up until the move over to the, to the IT division. And then Thad started out at St. Thomas in, um, as a web developer for the enrollment management team and worked on event tools in which he supported, I don't know, on a daily basis. Um, so the initial thought of this was how do we take the IT element out of it and make sure that the users themselves can just manage their own events with minimal IT support. Um, and that's what this starts to do, it starts to create those um, registration pages uh, and the pages you see and change. Um, you guys will have experience that those things weren't so big and bold. One of the things that's in the, um, in the text box, uh, in the rich text box, is you can remove all the formatting. I had copy and pasted it from a PowerPoint, so it grabbed everything. Um, but that set up the shell of the event. It set up the, the registration pages, um, and now it's setting up what are the uh, options. So the second piece is more of the shopping cart of the experience. Um, the event that I had structured or set up in this Summit Events app University open house um, was more of like a conference style. Uh, so really to kind of highlight the different use cases. So with this in particular, trying to have and be able to have somebody build a schedule um, based on times, making sure that it automatically confirms uh, what we tend to see with our, um, with St. Thomas's in particular, which is our, our strongest use case, is that they will have daily visits and on those daily visits, it'll, they have a shopping cart of things that a student could do um, anywhere from meeting a faculty member to going on tour to having lunch um, to meeting with an athletic coach. Um, but all of those things start to become customizable and because you now have to reach out to other departments, we can't auto confirm and we can't set up a time because we now need to coordinate. So for like an open house events where it's structured, um, we can auto confirm an appointment, but for something that's a little bit more loose um, and a little bit more like, like you need a team of people to actually organize for each individual person, like a, a admissions office might do, that's where this starts to become really customizable. Um, the things that you will see on here is that we wanna make the appointments um, somewhat uh, flexible and restrictive. Uh, so one of the use cases that we've seen is that if a certain tour is only on, offered on a certain day, so if you're able to tour residence halls um, somewhat back on campus, or if you only have one speaker available for um, one of the days, you could restrict it to a particular instance, um, which the instance is the date that you're actually registering for, which will get set up next, um, or you can restrict it to a certain day of the week um, to make sure that if you did have 100 different dates dates that you could attend or register for, that it's only available on Tuesdays because that's the only time that that one's actually available. Um, so that starts to become the most customizable piece. And this is where you'll see uh, just highlighting what the different appointments are. Um, and the next piece is the instances. Um, and this is where it starts to get down to um, commonality of events. So you only have to set it up once. Um, so something like open house, if it's gonna be the same thing, the exact same thing twice, you don't need to change the marketing or the details on the page or anything like that. Um, you can just then create this again. Um, big use cases are gonna be info sessions. Uh, the info session, you'd be like, we're doing the same info session every week for the next four months. Um, you can create that one shell app that took the longest to put in all the text and to make sure all the right details are there in terms of what you want people to know. Um, but then the instances, honestly, if you're doing it, what was that, four times four? To, I now can't do math, 160 times, 16 times. Um, you, can, you could data load that or you could just clone it multiple times to create the instance that you want, which is what I did here. Um, and just updated the individual details. Um, some of the things that I would say that were coming through and I actually just posted this in the hub was like to have a virtual link 
is one of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to necessarily expose that virtual link prior to um, the person actually signing up. Like they should have to require, they should be required to sign up to actually get that link. Um, so we want to be able to put that in email. So that was just something that I put out there for an enhancement. Um, but the second piece now, or this last piece here is the triggered email. Um, this, uh, I'll be honest, we need to do some work and development on in that the, the triggered email is not, we tried to leverage and, and do what the um, classic email template builder does in terms of merging that in, but it's, you kind of have to know what the API names are for this to really work. So it's not that it's um, hard to do, it's just, I would say for the standard user who's not, who either doesn't have the Chrome plugin or you're in Lightning, um, it's hard to get what those API names are to make it, um, to get the merge fields that really want to, but all of this will pull. So everybody can get a triggered email as soon as they sign up um, on any status that you might choose, status or substatus. So that is, let's see, how much time is left on the video? Here, I'll jump a bit. Okay. I think, cause I think if you guys experience the front end registration, which is probably the, the bigger part of it, and I can actually see how many people actually did it, um, do the full, full experience. Um, the biggest thing that I try to show on the back end then is, um, what, what then gets built out. So this goes through the registration, which you guys did. And I think you can skip through this. Let's see how far we can get to. And it's right near the end. Um, but one of the, again, there's, there's always different ideas and different developments for how this works. Um, and the, let's see. So I get to my, oh, what I, I guess what I'm showing in the video here is I made an error. I think on the, on the initial submit page, I actually meant to have it as the confirmation page and on the confirmation page, it was supposed to be the registration page. Um, but I think what I really want to show is all of that is just, like whoops, and you just go and fix it. Um, you don't have to ask your web designer or marketing department to change those things. It's just edit and save, or edit, edit and, um, and adjust as you need to. Or even spelling errors, I think is the other one that I've always seen issues on. So, so all those pages then got just updated and changed immediately. Um, and that's the other piece of, I think we have a YouTube channel that has a couple of demos on there. I think I did one. I tried to do like a, could I set up an event that's registrable in five minutes? Um, and it, it was like an info session and didn't have a lot of text to it, but I was able to get it and set it up really quick to get, have people actually be able to register immediately. Um, it goes through the matching process. All the registration details full, flow onto this record. One of the things I didn't talk about was the matching rules because I think duplicate uh, management is always a challenge in any org. Um, Sorry, before I get to that, what you see then is that person's itinerary is all set up, uh, which we have a visual force page, which actually shows what that would look like to put it in a, in maybe a branded email, or you have other, um, other tools to utilize um, to create those PDFs. It'd be easy to, to put that together and not have to manually keystroke everybody's individual appointments. So, um, or, op or options they signed up for. So, okay, so that was me yep. talking really fast for. 13 minutes. You did great. <laughs> now I'll have to try to make it really fast too. So let's see what I can do. Um, this is getting going to get even more nerdy. Uh, this is basically how we collaborate together on um, making this product. And we just want to point out right now that we're going to be able to answer questions maybe at that last session of the day today. Because um, we're probably not going to get to any right now. Uh, how we collaborate is this product made by the NPSP team called Cumulus CI, which uh, melds together Git repositories, which is where your code lives out in the world and um, everyone can go see, um, and spinning up a scratch org and then developing off that scratch org. So you can see a developer basically goes and gets the repository, and we'll show this really quick in a second, and puts it on a local computer. And then Cumulus allows you to build a scratch org, which is your own personal version of Salesforce that has just Summit events built in it. And in that scratch org, you can do click changes. You can push code to it and try it. And then you can pull all that code back to your local repository, your local version of the code. And then when you're satisfied with that, you can actually take steps to put it back into the public repository where everybody gets to use it um, and start with that point. And this is replica replicatable between different developers. So you can have many developers working on the project 
And you can see that packaging org is from the, the public repository. We, if we have a version that we really like, we can make that into a package, a managed package, and push it out for everyone to install and to get updates from. Um, I want to point out we're going to do something really nerdy right now. And what I'm using right now is just seven commands in a terminal, um, which will be scary for some of you. That'll actually get you to an org that you can make a change in. And actually, the last two steps are, are basically retrieving those changes so I can get them back into my code base. When you figure out this, you'll feel like you're a magician. So here is our Git repository. This is where our code lives on the public area. Everyone can see this. Everyone can get it. Um, we're going to clone this repository. So we're going to copy the link here for that. We're going to go to our terminal. And I want to point out that there's nothing in this directory right now. I'm going to type a command git clone and then that URL. And that's going to pull all that code onto my personal desktop. And you can see in a second, we, we have a directory now that has some events in there. We're going to go into that directory. And we'll go in there and we can see that we have all the code that was on the repository now on our personal computer. It's the same stuff that you can see right here on the Git repository. Now we're going to see what Cumulus can do for us. And this is a command line and it takes, it takes some installation instructions that are out there. You need Python, Salesforce command line. Um, the first thing we have to do though is um, register with one of our uh, production orgs to say you have the right to make scratch orgs and how many scratch orgs. And this means you just allow, uh, log into your one of your production orgs and it doesn't affect the org at all. It just gets its permissions from that. You can even do it from a development org. You just have less scratch orgs available to you. And so now uh, we have set that up and let's see uh, what Cumulus sets up for us. It sets us up several different kinds of scratch orgs, beta, dev, feature, QA, release. And this is kind of part of NPSP's process of, of uh, making those, making a, a scheduled kind of deployment. Um, the bottom ones that are connected towards are just St. Thomas, ones that I've connected. And we're going to focus on the dev org, and we're going to run this command that's going to install everything into a dev org for us. And we're going to use the dev org, which is dev. So we're specifying dev. And this flow is a set of tasks that are telling the Scratch org what it needs to be built into. So one of the things we've requested right now is that EDA gets installed. And so it actually there's a text file inside of our code that says all the dependencies we, we have. And so we said we want EDA. So now it's going into the Git repository for EDA, finding the latest managed pack or managed package and installing it for us. And then it also is, and it's doing some cleanup here. It also installs our code now. And when it does that in that text file where I asked for EDA to be, um, use as a YAML file if you want to know the truth of it. We're asking it to install our code to create a public site to install permission sets to the right for public users and an admin user and to uh, do sharing rules. And so when this is all installed and this is sped up a bit, by the end of this process, you'll have an org where you can actually go in and see some of the vets and it, you know, it'll be data free except for the data that we had installed. And it takes a quick snapshot of what we've installed so it knows what has changed when we start changing things. We can see now we have a dev org for one of seven days and we have our own subdomain there from Salesforce. And now we're gonna open it up through the command line. This is the next command. So we're opening up the dev org in a browser. So now this is my personal version of Salesforce scratch org. Summit events is installed. You can see that we have sample data in there, test event. Um, we have an instance there that you can register for. So you can register through a site that's been set up on that scratch org, just like Ryan showed you. And now the really cool thing is we can actually start making changes to this org and track them back down into our code base and benefit everyone when we eventually push it out to the public repository. So we're going to make a quick field here for the upper Midwest higher ed user group. We're going to, maybe we're going to track every time an event is one that is made by the user group. Just 
description. You've all made fields before. This is the same process in a scratch org, except this is, you know, not connected to any of your prod orgs or your scratch orgs or any, or uh, staging orgs. So you're not hurting anyone else's code. So now we're going to ask Cumulus and the Kurt terminal to see what changes that we've noticed inside the org that we just spun up. And we should see, yep, there we, we see the new um, field that we created. And we also noticed that the layouts updated because that new field appeared on them. So this tracks permission sets, layouts, fields, workflows, anything can be tracked through a scratch org and pulled back via Cumulus if you change them in that org. And so now we're gonna retrieve those changes that we just noticed. And we can see that it pulled down these changes into our local computer code because they existed out in the clicks in the clicks of um, our scratch org. They didn't really exist in code yet. We pulled them back. And now I'm going to use a git command to see um, to add these into my git, which is git is a local change um, tracking solution. So that was a quick and dirty way to see how you can actually use a, a scratch org for development. There's another exciting product out there and I don't know what we're doing for time because I'm presenting, but yell at me, Ryan, if we're running out. Um, this is called Mateco. It's very new. It's from the NPSP people who made Cumulus CI, but it's a click interface for uh, doing exactly what we did. And it's also kind of a project management system. So you, for, you know, we have our, our code up here, thanks to salesforce.org, and we can make a project. And let's say we're doing stuff for our higher ed user group. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add a checkbox to this. Um, I should point out that that checkbox doesn't exist in our code yet because I never pushed it up to the public repository. And uh, it only exists locally for me. Um, this, uh, these scratch orgs get spun up thanks to Salesforce. So they've authenticated the dev hub and everything. And this is all run on Heroku. This, this management system is open source and available to everyone. Um, but uh, you would probably need a Heroku account to actually make it work for your organization. And it's very much in its infancy. Um, I just added Ryan as a collaborator. I'm spinning up a scratch org the same way I did my commands. I just had to click a button there um, it, and I sped it up. It was a lot slower than that. But now I can view my org the same way I made the command CCI uh, org open or browser dev. It's the same way it's happening here. Summit Events is installed in this. It does the same process behind the scenes and we go through the same process to make that new field in our instance. And we have uh, the same ability to go and register on this. So we have everything's in place just like we did when we spun it up with the terminal. And we're going to do the same thing here. I probably could have sped up this because it's the same thing twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll, I'll prove that same stuff is happening. One of the things that I'll add is like, I think the, the way that I guess I saw Mateco when they presented this at the open source or the, the sprint um, this last, I think it was March, um, March, April, they really presented it as um, the whole idea is to make it, uh, collaboration uh, for development easier. Um, so really being able to leverage those who are non-developers and maybe not comfortable using command line um, to be able to be able to provide support um, rather than just maybe watching from the side or having to learn an entirely new set of um, set of skill sets just to be able to uh, support an open source community project in the platform. So I'm retrieving the changes from that org via this click interface. And it, let, it, it, it profiles all my changes first. And speaking of profiles, usually you don't want to uh, track profiles. Um, so I always turn that off just because it gets problematic. And I track permission sets with summit events, but not profiles. So I'm retrieving those changes. You have to make a, a little instruction about what your, what your change is. And this all goes into when you, you actually make your package um, you'll see the changes in the package release saying, oh, this has changed. So this all helps in the future when you're packaging. And this is when I'm going to send it over to my QA person, which I assigned um, Ryan to. And what he'll do is take this um, 
same code I just manipulated, you know, he'll spin up his own scratch org and then he'll test what I've done. And if he approves it, then we can decide whether or not, well, we can merge it into the master code, which means everybody when they spin up their new scratch org will start from the same point as our new change is in place with. So you can actually view this pull request. This is what it looks like on GitHub. Um, so Mateco did all this work. It added my request in there. And then when Ryan approved it, it would go into the master branch, which is what they call the, the main branch of, of uh, code that is the most accurate and most new. Mm -hmm. So uh, that I think is one of the newest developments that's happened. And I think it, the excitement for me personally is I did not start out as a developer. Um, I have since learned because I thought that was the path we had to go down. Um, but I think that Metechal piece just opens this up to more engagement from um, not just developers and potentially admins, but also just like actual business users. Um, if they just have to click a button to say, here's what I would want to want, here's what I want or what I want to test through, they have, they have the opportunity to engage in, in that light with, only, with learning less than um, what might be expected initially. And I see Megan say she doesn't know what she saw, but it seemed like magic. Well, <laughs> I would say you could be a magician and it is a little daunting at the beginning. Um. Yeah. So um so kind of where are we at today as, as we start to, to wrap up a little bit um i think the one of the exciting things is that we have salesforce's attention and some engagement around this um i think i connect with somebody from the open source commons in particular um on a daily basis um so they're they're very much inc uh, inclined to to want to keep us moving forward in terms of this development because they see a use case for a lot of um eda and mpsp users and just salesforce users in general um, we are on the path to being a p officially part of the so open source commons. Uh, and really what that starts to come down to is that it becomes uh, a package or a managed package, um, but it's still community supported. Um, and then we're getting more involved, um, more people involved where it initially just started as I think like Thad, Jim, my, and the St. Thomas team, other St. Thomas CRM team. Um, we've already gotten other, other input from um, other users outside of St. Thomas, which is, is much needed. And then the Mateco piece um, that we've kind of articulated on. So that's, that's kind of where we're at today. Um, a roadmap, as Jim mentioned earlier, we do have a mini sprint coming up um, with, the, with one of the big goals of being package ready or getting really close to it. Um, meaning that it's something that you can just download and it's installed in your org and you can uninstall it um, just as easily. Um, we're working through the payment process, which I would say is also right there in terms of the, how close we are with the packaging, if not even closer. Um, and that's going to have, uh, add more functionality to being able to, um, make this tool even more impactful to higher ed users as we see, maybe not on the admission side, having paid events, but we definitely do for alumni relations, um, a guest management feature. So one person could potentially register multiple events and how that works on the back end in terms of creating contacts, relationships, all of that. Um, and then a, a more, what I'm, what I'm going to say, a more functional check-in functionality, um, as we actually saw a post in the hub, um, saying like, what's an easy way to manage 6,000 people coming into an event and not have to have them go to a hundred different computers to check in. Um, let's say that's how we're kind of doing it now. We haven't quite as St. Thomas particularly had an event of 6,000 people. Um, but can we do an easy check-in similar to what we did with the QR code? Can we make something as slick and quick um, so people can check in and their registration status updates? Um, there is more details out there on GitHub, which I'd encourage you to go look at, uh, and then on the Power of Us Hub, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll see some engagement and conversation there. Um, but I just want to encourage you to put more questions uh, out there so that everybody can see them. Um, being that this is a community-based project, we want to get the community involved in every way possible. So I think that's typing in the chat. I think we got to wrap up there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the slide deck will be there so you can go look at it. Yes. <laughs> Could you go back one, one slide, please? Because I think one thing that you have there, you buried the lead on this right there, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, look at, I mean, just so amazing. Um, the 4,300 plus registration events, over 20,000 people have registered for this. So this isn't some, you know, just a concept that hasn't been used. St. Thomas is really um, uses from a lot of perspective, their admissions events, yeah. advancement events, and then um, are now extending this and making this available to us, so. Well, thank you. It was great yes. to do this and we'll take questions at the last session. <laughs>